Hello, and welcome to Region Lock. The Japanese are often seen as the founding fathers for many popular genres of game, perhaps none more so than horror. America saw most entries in the Fatal Frame series, or as it's known in Europe, the Project Zero series. Two games remained overseas, however. One of these was a remake of the second Fatal Frame for the Wii, but today we'll be looking at the other, the fourth entry in the series, Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse released exclusively to Japanese audiences in 2008 for the Nintendo Wii, and marked the series' first venture onto Nintendo hardware. All prior games were only released for both PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Mask of the Lunar Eclipse was published by Nintendo themselves, and they were partially involved in the game's development process alongside Grasshopper Manufacture, while lead development was handled by series creators Tecmo. To ensure that each game could act as a standalone entry in the series, the team decided against having a numerical indicator for each title. While there are consistent elements that tie the games together, they can be played individually as self-contained stories. Chronologically, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is the first entry in the series' timeline. The year is 1980, six years prior to Miku Hinasaki entering the Himuro Mansion in the first Fatal Frame release. Of a group of five friends, two of the girls have passed away under inexplicable circumstances. Of the remaining survivors, Misaki Aso and Madoka Tsukimori return to the island they grew up on, hoping to solve the mystery surrounding their friend's demise. After not hearing back from Misaki and Madoka, Ruka, the game's main protagonist, decides to follow suit. What ties these girls together is that they know they were kidnapped on the island 10 years earlier, but strangely they have no memories of the place other than that they were found together, unharmed, and were taken off the island. It isn't long before Madoka is killed by angered spirits and Kirishima appears, responding to Ruka's mother's request to help her while on the island. The Hidden Moon Disease, a disease that has spread across Dogetsu Island, also known as the Luna Sedata Syndrome, is the English translation chosen for Getsu Yubyo. Other possible translations would be Tranquil Moon Disease or Secluded Moon Disease. Patients suffering from this affliction slowly lose their memories, eventually leading to confusion and paranoia. The disease got its name because one of the side effects was patients seeking out the moon. Seeing the moon or standing in its light would calm them down, and they seemed to temporarily reach clarity. They would be scared of any reflective surface because they weren't able to recognize their own face, claiming that it looks blurred or distorted. The disease can be transferred just by sight. You only have to witness the face of someone in the later stages of the hidden moon disease to contract it yourself. The camera obscura is an invention by Dr. Kunihiko Aso. Searching ways to get closer to the afterlife, Aso invented several devices that could capture supernatural phenomena, like a camera and a spirit radio. Throughout his life, Aso continued improving his camera technology and left them behind in places he thought they could be of use someday, like the hotel he was staying at while on Dogetz Island. The camera was later gifted to the local Aso Museum, where it is picked up in 1980 by Madoka and later Duka. Several film types can be loaded into the camera, which have different levels of power. The higher the power of the film, the more effective it will be in capturing ghosts. Zero film, however, is its own class and the most powerful. Some of Fatal Frame's final bosses can only be defeated by this rare type of film. The camera can also be upgraded to, for example, capture a wider angle or take more powerful shots. Filters and lenses can also be applied for bonus damage or other attributes. These upgrades can be purchased with crystals found throughout the game or points accumulated through fighting ghosts. Points can also be used to unlock additional outfits. Fatal Frame 4 was the first game to include a new weapon, the Spirit Stone Flashlight. Developed by Dr. Aso, it supposedly contains a Spirit Stone as the name would suggest, giving it the power to exercise ghosts with a concentrated blast of light. Lenses can also be applied for extra power or other functions. Development for Mask of the Lunar Eclipse was split across three studios, with Tecmo taking charge of gameplay and atmosphere, while Grasshopper Manufacture took control of the game's character animations and a variety of other elements. Nintendo was also involved, managing general production of the title. The game was initially conceived when series co-creator Keisuke Kikuchi first took notice of Wii hardware. He, alongside the other series co-creator, Makoto Shibata, took on the roles of producer and director respectively, while also bringing in Goichi Suda, also known as Suda51, to help co-direct, co-write, and design the title. Suda was initially unsure about working on the project because of his distaste towards horror titles and ghosts in particular. The Fatal Frame series was created with the intention of making a scary title for a Japanese audience, leading the team to move away from monsters or zombies which they felt geared more towards a Western audience, choosing to feature ghosts instead. 
With Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, the team chose to base the game on a desolate island in the 1980s to have the characters seem truly alone, with cell phones having not yet become commonplace either. Makoto Shibata and Keisuke Kikuchi were interviewed by Nintendo for the game's release. Shibata spoke about how the duo were excited to be working with a large selection of developers, as they felt it would make everybody work harder to create a great game. They accredited Nintendo for keeping them on their toes, making sure the story had no vague plot holes, and telling them when they thought it wasn't scary enough. A selection of easter eggs are also found in the game, courtesy of Nintendo's attachment. After completing the game, the player unlocks two Nintendo outfits, Zero Suit Samus from the Metroid series and Luigi, a la Luigi's Mansion. With such an iconic set of developers attached to the title, it was surprising to many that there was a lack of localization internationally after all prior releases in the series made their way overseas. Fans of the series made their displeasure of this quite apparent. Nintendo of America president Reggie fils claimed in an interview with MTV at the time, We are not the publisher of that title in the Americas. Not long after, this was followed by an official statement from Tecmo. Nintendo holds the publishing rights to Fatal Frame Wii, which was developed by Tecmo and Grasshopper Manufacture and released in Japan on July 31st, 2008. Nintendo of America has since then decided not to publish the title in North America. Consequently, the title will not be released in this territory. As the owner of the IP, Tecmo feels very unfortunate that the fans of the series in North America will not have a chance to play the game, but respect the final decision made by Nintendo of America. Rumors circulated online that the actual reason was because of a dispute between Nintendo and Tecmo. Allegedly, Nintendo requested that Tecmo make alterations to the game for Western release in order to fix a number of bugs, as well as the game's often criticized controls, to which Tecmo had apparently refused. Whether this is true, however, it has not been confirmed. Adding to the confusion, online reports indicated that the game was set for a European release. The game received store page listings on European websites, and popular localization company Xseed spoke on the matter of a US release. When asked if they would be localizing the game, executive VP Ken Berry stated, If you're talking about Fatal Frame 4 for the Wii, then it's coming to the US, even though it won't be by us. Can't tell you who's bringing it over, but keep your eyes peeled for an official announcement, hopefully sometime soon. There were even paid-for advertisements in Nintendo Official Magazine for both France and Spain in April 2009, claiming that the game will haunt your Wii next month, suggesting a proposed release in May of 2009. One thing's for certain, though, the game ultimately did not see any international release. As a result, fans of the game created their own translation patch in January 2010. This required files to be stored on an SD card or USB hard drive, making sure to not contribute to piracy of the game. The team ensured that an official retail copy must be present in the disk drive in order to execute the patch, which would also bypass the console's region locking. At the time, homebrew on the Wii console was in its infancy. Through the use of an exploit of the console's SD card menu, the translation worked before any semblance of a homebrew channel existed. Since then, the translation can now simply be launched through the homebrew channel. That's all for today, but hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Region Locked. If you like the sound of my voice and would like to see more exclusive Japanese horror games, you can come have a look at my channel. I play and translate all kinds of Japanese horror games. I'm also currently working on a revised edition of my earlier translation of Fatal Frame 4, so come have a look if you want to delve deeper into the story. Thank you, Did You Know Gaming, for having me, and see you later. And thank you for coming. Be sure to check out Gab's channel, the link is in the description down below. I'm just here to remind you that Region Locked is supported by Patreon. Here are some of the patrons on screen. And now we'd like to take a moment to thank our top patrons. Getsaberry, Chad Barnan, Chris Ingersoll, Hector I. Murillo, It's your boy Beowulf, Straight Up Yuri, Pandion, That's right, read my name, you dirty girl. Malcavio, Era1355, Arkady Skywalker, Phantom Sonic, The Natch, Karam Chowdhury, Dean Evinger Jr., Robert Cox, Petite Mew, Carl Brackman, Paul White II, An Accumulative 19, Nesta Delion III, Jordan Ferrari, Vitas Varnas, Matthias, Boreas Bear, Maximilian Summers, Super AJS, Max of Few Trades, Yumi the Palico, Tikazu, The Three Master Gamers, Joshua Bock and Devin Sloan.
Dini Bam. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Japanese exclusive games coming at your face at least once a month, but hopefully more in the future when we're doing more of the videos. Making.